This is a special edition of Raw Hebrew videos for on the Knicks channel for Friday, July 19th. Now, I did one earlier on the bigger picture. Please look at that one so some of y'all can get some understanding. But I'm doing this second one, and I'm skipping the intro one. And I'm doing this second one because of what Ian Begley said. Now, I want to really, for you, some of y'all only hear what you want to hear and don't hear what's actually being said. So let's, I want to read what Ian Begley wrote and let's read exactly what he said. So some of y'all start going off and creating trades that, I mean, some of y'all imagination really should write novels, but let's look at what Ian Begley actually said. Clint Capella Atlanta was one big that the Knicks checked in on. I don't know how far talks went. I don't know if they're active at this very moment. But they did check in on Capella. So let's look at what he said. He didn't say there was trades going on. He did not say that. He didn't say that the Knicks offered anything. He didn't say that. So please don't start making, this is what I think the Knicks offered. No. He didn't say that. He said they checked in on Capella. That's a fact. Begley said it. He's one of my dudes. That's a fact. They checked in on it. Now, the question would ask, first off, why would they check in on Clint Capella? Well, let's make the obvious answer first, because they would be interested, possibly, in obtaining Clint Capella. So then that begs the second question. Clint Capella earns $22,365,000, let's call it $22,300,000 in the last year of his deal. Why would the Knicks do that? They don't have no money. That begs the third question, which is the one I'm going to try to answer here. How would the Knicks maintain their rotation and obtain Clint Capella? Now, first... Before we talk about it from the Knicks perspective, we must look at it from the Atlanta perspective. Many of y'all would come with trade scenarios that have no objective view. You're looking straight from what you want for the Knicks and not why a team would do it. And I bring up the person that brought up, I don't know their name, Albrin Sangoon. Why would Houston be wanting to do that with a guy that's possibly the future, a future all-star? Question, the answer is they wouldn't. So why are you bringing them up? But why would Atlanta be interested in trading Clint Capella? He's 30 years old. Look at Atlanta's core. Atlanta has Onyek Akongvu, who they, who's a five. He's 24 years old. They just drafted Ren Shaker this, this, with, the, with one of the top picks in the draft. He's 19. They got Dyson Daniels from New Orleans. He's 21. Jalen Johnson from Duke. He's 23. So they have a young core. They just traded to John T. Murray. Even Trey Young, the leprechaun, is only 26. So they got a young core. Clint Capella is kind of not in that timeline. And he's expiring. Okay. Why would they, what would they be wanting for him? Either young like the draft picks or young talent. Or both, right? Well, the Knicks don't have a lot of draft picks, so let's take that off the table. Okay? So how would they obtain Clint Capella? What would they have that Atlanta would want? The centerpiece of that trade would be Precious Achua. Why would Precious Achua be the centerpiece of that trade? He's 24, going to 25. He's power forward that can also play center if you want him to. And we talked earlier about his market value. We talked about his market value uh, being set by guys like Jalen John. I'm not sorry, Jalen Smith, Obi Toppin, um, and Najee Marshall. They set the market value for young power forwards that could also play center. That is there, except for Toppin. Toppin is strictly a power forward. Toppin got more money than all of them. Toppin got $58 million over four years. But then you look at 
Um, let me see. You look at. I'm going to see where we we got this. Uh, Najee Marshall. I'm looking for him. Najee Marshall got. I think he got something like 27 million over four year, three years. Jalen Smith got something in the same vicinity. I'm just want to see here. Let me just see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying. J N N Nigel Marshall got 27 million over three years. Jalen Smith also got 27 million over three years, and Obi Toppin got 58 million or 60 million over four years. So you got nine million, nine million, and about 15 million for these guys. Okay, that's the market now for Precious Achua. Somewhere between nine million and 15 million. That's his. That's his market back. Okay. Now, Atlanta is kind of in the rebuild. So aside from the guys I mentioned, they got a 27-year-old um, DeAndre Hunter as well at, at the small forward spot, okay? But they got him. They got Bogdan Bogdanovich. He's 32. He don't even fit the timeline. They're probably trying to move him if they can, but they got him. So Larry Nance, 32 years old. He's $11 million and he's in. This last year of his deal. So they're going to try to get rid of some of these expiring dudes and rebuild. So they got Trey Young. They got Onyeka Congo. They got Zachary. I can't. Rashaila or whatever. Rashaker, whatever his name is. And then they got Dyson Daniels. Jalen Johnson, who I liked coming out of Duke. He had, there were rumors about his attitude, which is why he dropped. But talent, the boy could ball. And so Jalen Johnson started a bunch of games for them last year. And he's still in his rookie deal. So while they got this, right, they can use a young power forward that can play both the four and the five. Come off the bench if you need him. He can start if you need him to. Okay, that still has upside. Precious to true. So how would the deal work? Okay. So if we start off, let's take out your calculator, okay? So we start off $22.3 million. That's Clint Capella. So you got to send back more than that. Okay. Ready? Keita Bates Dia, 2.6 million. Jericho Sims, 2 million. Tyler Kolick, 2 million. Right? That's about 6.6 .6 right there. And what do they have so far? They got a young talent, Tyler Kolick, right? They got Jericho Sims, who can play center. They got Base D up. Okay. You sign Precious, sign and trade. Some, I would say 11, I would try to make that number as high as I can. So I'm going to say 11 million for my man. Okay, so you're talking about 6.6 .6 plus 11. Now you're at 17.6 million. You need some more money. Some of y'all start bringing up deuce right away. Fools. No, the Knicks got a trade exception. They got an R.J. Barrett trade exception that expires in December. That trade exception is worth what? $5.2 million. You add that to 17.6, and what do you have? $22.8 million. And you got... 22.3 coming back. Therefore, you got 500,000 more going out than you got coming back. You can get the deal done. The question is, what is Atlanta looking for? So I just made centerpiece of this deal precious. But all y'all that's so high on Tyler Colin, if Atlanta, and the Knicks playing him a whole bunch of minutes in the summer league, if Atlanta thinks, you know what? He could back up Dyson Daniels and Trey Young. There you go. Now, you got a young talent, plus Precious, who was a number one draft pick. You got a young power forward that can play the center position. You're getting a whole bunch of expiring money with Sims, uh, what else? Sims, uh, uh, Bates, Diop. You're getting expiring money. 
okay? And you're set for the future. You get, you give now, now you can hand the center position, which is what they wanted to do. They were, they can hand the center position to Onyeka Kongu, who the year that he came out, I thought was the top big in that draft. And that, and that was a pretty stacked draft. That was the same draft as Obi. Obi. So I, I like Onyeka. He, he's in this 15, he's getting 14 million, 15 next year, 16. You, you got him locked in. Okay, and now you hand the center position to him. You got backup. If you need backup, you got Cody Zeller, 32 years old, Bruno Fernando, and now you got Precious Achua as well if you need a backup. And now you're in rebuild mode, but you're in rebuild mode with some very experienced young talent. They're rookies, the youngest dude, Zach, Zachary, but the rest of these cats been playing for a couple of seasons. So you're in a good rebuild position. The next thing, they're going to have a couple more moves they would need to make if I'm Atlanta. I got to get something for Trey Young. I mean, unless you want to rebuild with him, but you could get something for Trey Young. And then now you're in full rebuild and you move forward from there. That's what I would do if I was Atlanta. And so this is how a Clint Capella deal gets done. So you're talking about. You're talking about a sign and trade involving Precious Achua. You're talking about Bates Dia moving on. You're talking about Sims. You're talking about Kolek. And you're talking about the R.J. Barrett trade exception. Now, somebody that's out here, one of you amateur experts, is going to tell me whether this could be done or not. I don't know. Can we trade Bates Dia? I don't know. Can we trade um, Kolek? I think we can, but tell me if that's the deal. You could get this done. You still got your rotation. You could start either Capella or Mitch Robb. And whoever's running the second unit, whichever one, is going to be hellified. And so now the Knicks are ready to go. So that would be a way to obtain a guy in Clint Capella that would definitely fit Tom Thibodeau's rim protecting five would definitely fit the Knicks' defensive schemes, would definitely solve the two-center problem the Knicks are trying to get. I mean, trying to clear up after having lost Hartenstein. And not only that, if you did get Clint Capella, he's a free agent. You got you cleared your books for next summer. And so you got free agent money coming out too. So it makes sense. Um, I was just trying to figure how they, why they would make that call at all. Cause I got to go by that. They made the call because Ian said they made the call. Why would they make the call? What would be their offer? How would that get done at $22.3 million? Well, there you go. Precious would be the centerpiece. You got Tyler Colette going there. You got, uh, the money from base D up Jericho Sims and the trade exception of 5.2 million from RJ Barrett done deal. Y'all enjoy your Friday. So long.